As long as you are in this world, you will be tested. And every test that you are going to go through is going to boil down to one question. Is Christ enough? Is Christ is enough? Is he enough? When it comes to our relationships, you'll be tested on this thing. Is Christ enough? When it comes to your work, your employ, you'll be tested on the question, is Christ enough? Your emotions, the way you feel, will test you. It'll ask the question, is Christ enough? Every test you will ever face will boil down to the question, is Christ enough? There's only one thing this world needs, and that's Jesus Christ. They don't need our great speeches. They don't need anything else but Christ. Christ is more than enough. And that's the title of my message today, More Than Enough. God bless you as you've tuned in to Souls of the Word Church's midweek manner message. I trust this message will be a blessing to you. I trust it will encourage you in these times that we are facing. You know, the Bible says in Isaiah 60, though darkness should cover the earth and gross darkness the people, the Lord shall arise upon thee and he will make his face to shine upon thee. It's one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. But I think of late, every chapter that I read is my favorite. Let's go to the scripture. John chapter 14, verse 6 to 9. The scripture reads and says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. When Jesus is speaking these words, these are the last moments that he is spending with the disciples before he goes to the cross. So he's saying things that are very valuable to them. You know, if it was my last moments on earth, and I had my sons around me, Benjamin, Joshua, and I had my daughter, Eliana, what I would want more than anything is to impart words to them that would strengthen them for when I am not there. And this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. And all the way from John 14 right through to um, the Garden of Gethsemane, powerful, powerful words from Jesus. My favorite prayer is in John chapter 17, where he doesn't only pray for the disciples, but he prays for those who would believe on the disciples um, or believe on him for the disciples' sake. And that's us. And he says that, you know, in his prayer in John 17, that we may be one. And the same glory that he had from the beginning with the Father would be ours. Powerful, powerful words that left me many a time flat-faced on my floor, worshiping God and, and saying, I'm not worthy, but thank God for his grace. So verse 7 says, if you had known me, you should have known my father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip saith, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? What Philip was actually saying is, Jesus, we want more than you. You are not enough. We want to see this Father that you are talking about. Amazing, because Jesus himself was God in the flesh. Colossians chapter 2 um, expressly speaks to us and says to us that in Christ, is all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The fullness of the Father, the fullness of the Holy Spirit is in Christ. And here was God himself speaking to Philip. He was the express image of the Father. And Philip said, basically he was saying, you are not enough. Show us more than you. And it's amazing because if you consider that these disciples that walked with Jesus, they'd seen the miracles that he had wrought, that experienced God in all his fullness and all his glory, and all his majesty revealed really by healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead. Here they were with Jesus and Philip says, you are not enough. That is basically what he's saying here. You know, we have to ask ourselves the question, is he enough when <clears throat> there's sin in our lives? Is he enough to help us overcome sin? Is he enough to help us overcome condemnation, um, guilt, hopelessness? Perhaps your cupboards are empty. Is Christ enough to deal with that? Is Christ enough to deal with our bank balance, our bank balance being on zero? 
easy enough to deal with joblessness, easy enough to deal with someone who's without a partner, a friend, a companion, without anybody in their life. Is he enough? Will he be able to um, supply the need? There were many times in my life when I was challenged with this question personally. Um, I have relentlessly tried to pursue God for a good portion of my life. And in my pursuit, there were many times when I came upon obstacle after obstacle. Um, and sometimes I'd pursue God recklessly, I must be honest, to a point where maybe I, I left my family in lack and want, and I would come to rock bottom when I remember specifically a time in Heidelberg where all we had, we had two boys with us, and all we had was a bowl of rice. <laughs> and Kelly looked at the rice, and she said to me, Junaid, this is all we have. I looked at her face, and I asked the question, is Christ enough? Because we had given up everything, gone over to Heidelberg on the word of the Lord to seek God and to seek his will for our lives. And here we are, following after God, pursuing after him, doing everything that was uh, probably right. We knew we were in the right place at the right time. But here we were with hardly anything. And I asked the question, is Christ enough? And that's when I heard his still small voice. So many times in my life I've heard that voice. So I got up from where I was, went to go dig a hole. By the end of that day, we had food in our cupboards and we had steak to eat, praise God. And it wasn't because I had worked. There was, there was supply that came in that was more than, um, than the money I earned. God showed himself once again that he was more, more, so much more than enough. My son had lost his life. Just, uh, he was a stillborn baby. As I looked at that lifeless body, I'm sure I could have asked the question, is Christ enough? Here is something in front of me, no life in him. Faced with a situation where someone's in front of me with no life in him, and some, something that Kelly and I really look forward to. We had visions of our son Benjamin playing in the yard and playing with his friends and learning and doing things. And in the face of all that we had hoped for, the result we got was a lifeless boy. And the question could have easily come to me, is Christ enough? He proved himself enough that day. My son was raised from the dead. He's now a brilliant young boy who constantly surprises me with his wisdom and his, and his um, brilliance. He builds things that I can't even, I don't even know how to build. I don't know how he builds the things that he builds. Christ is enough. There were many, many times in my life when Christ showed himself enough. When it felt like I was lonely and nobody was around me and there was no way out for me in situations, Christ showed himself as enough. He's more than enough. He becomes enough when we partner with him, when we have a personal and a real encounter with him. I've said this before so many times and I'm going to say it again. Relationship with God is the most important thing that we can have in life. It's more important than all that we possess. It's more important than all we do or don't do. Christ, relationship with God, is more important than anything. Adam in the garden, what did he have with all things provided? Yes, he had work. But what was more important than the work that he had? He had to walk with God in the cool of the day. Relationship with God. From relationship with God stems everything. The Bible says, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. There's, there's something greater than seeking the things of God. There's something greater than seeking the gifts, and that's seeking the giver. That's looking to have a personal relationship with Christ. Once you have that as your main priority, you'll find that is more than enough. You know, before I had the responsibility that I have now, before I did all that I'm doing right now, I believe that what I'm doing is making a difference in people's lives. We see the results very often. Um, but there was something more important to me than all of us. That's relationship with Christ. I bring myself, very often, I bring myself back to a place when I had none of these responsibilities. I was just a boy walking home from school, um, if any of you know Crawford Station, for those of you in Cape Town, it's a long road from Crawford Station to Brant Road. But every day I'd have to walk that road home. And it would just be me 
and the Lord. And seeds were planted in my heart by my great-grandmother, my mother, my grandmother, um, Psalm 91, the scriptures. And I would always ask the question, is there a God, you know? And on those walks home, that's when he would reveal himself to me. I never saw thunder, clouds. I never saw, okay, sometimes it was raining, but I, I never saw a dove flying down from heaven or great signs and wonders, but just an overwhelming sense of the presence of God. In those moments when there was no responsibility, um, no heed to the call of God in my life, none of the knowledge that I now have of the scripture, Christ showed himself as real to me, and he became enough to me. It was in those moments that my life transformed, my life changed. It was visible even in my schoolwork. It was visible um, with my teachers. Up until that experience, I think it was in Standard 8, so that would be 1998. Up until that experience with Christ, just walking home from school, seeing the tall trees blow in the wind, and God revealing himself in a very personal way to me, changed my life. And I want the same for you. I want Christ to be enough. I don't want him to just be enough because he's more than enough. I want him to be more than enough for you. So in those moments, I realized that there's something more to life than just things. There's something more to life than what I have or don't have. There's something more. There's a God and his presence can be felt. His presence is very real. And that's what I want for all of us. He becomes enough when not only we experience his presence or when we have a relationship with him, he also becomes enough when we remember. Just remember all the good that is in our lives. Each and every one of you listening to this, if you think back to a time where um, something could happen to you, something you can't explain, there will be those moments. I want you to see that those moments didn't just happen by chance. It was orchestrated by a divine hand. If all of you think back in your life, times when you shouldn't have made it, times when you came through, times when you don't know how you came through, I want you to know in those moments, God was there. God was there. And we must remember those moments. Remembrance is such a powerful tool for when we go into our future. If you remember that God helped you overcome a certain thing in the past, then whatever you are facing now, you will have an assurity. You'll have a confidence that regardless of what you are facing, God will bring you through. My family, my brothers, my sisters, I want to put to us today, put to us today, that he is enough. And he's more than enough. He's much, 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 much more than enough. He's worth more than heaven's glory. John turned and he saw him whose head and whose hair was as white as wool. This is talking about in the book of Revelation, when Christ is revealed not just like that man, not just as a man, a man that Philip perhaps saw through the eyes of the flesh, a man that walked with him, a man that got dirty like the rest of them. In Revelation, he's not revealed like that. In Revelation, he's revealed as the Son of God. He's revealed as the Word of God. He's revealed as one whose head and whose hair is as white as wool, whose eyes are as a flame of fire, who's dressed from the neck right down to the feet in white and he's, who's girt about with a golden girdle. His feet shine as refined brass. Hallelujah. Across his vesture is written, King of kings and Lord of lords. John caught a vision of Jesus in the book of Revelation that to this day astounds me. And I think the revelation behind this vision that he saw was so powerful. John saw 24 elders surrounding the throne of God, the Lamb. They were worshiping him. They were saying, um, holy, holy. Oh, no, they were saying worthy, worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. Oh, when I think of this vision, when I, I think of this beautiful scene, but they weren't just crying out worthy, worthy, worthy. They, they had done two very important things. Oh, well, three. The Bible says that they left their thrones. That means they left their position. They weren't, so, they weren't more consumed with position, with power, and what they were, this vision of Christ. They left the throne. Something in front of them was worth more than the throne that they sat on. They took the crowns and they threw it before his feet. And the crown signifies, in, in our Christian life, it signifies our accomplishments. It, it, it signifies the endowments that Christ would bestow upon us. 
Paul said, from henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Hallelujah. They threw those crowns down at his feet. What they saw in front of them was worth more than their crown. And they bowed down before him. He said, worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Christ is enough. He has more than enough. The Bible says the silver and the gold is all his. The cattle on a thousand hills belongs to him. But that question needs to become real to us. Is he enough when we are faced with things that can become so overwhelming? When we are faced with things that could possibly shake us to the core? When things we built our trust on, when things that we had hoped for falls away and it seems like there's no way for us? I want to tell us today that there's someone who's more than enough. More than enough. And he's not just there to be reached out to. It's not just about reaching out unto Christ or reaching out and touching him as though he's a distance from you and that you still need to crawl through things to get to him. No, no. The Bible says that the mystery that has been hid from all ages and from all generations is now revealed to us, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. John and Jesus, they preached a message that was very powerful. They said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. But after Christ had died and he resurrected again, the message changed. Paul said, the, the kingdom of God is within you. Brothers and sisters, Christ is enough. But not only is enough, he's in you. The more than enough God is right on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Paul, when he preached and he spoke and he taught, and whatever he did, he only wanted to prove this one thing, that Christ is enough. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2, verse 1 to 5, he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but with the demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Hallelujah. Christ. He wanted to display to everybody that Christ was enough. The power of the Holy Spirit is given to us so that we can prove, hallelujah, not only to ourselves but to everybody else as well, that Christ is enough. The power of the Holy Spirit is here right now. Even as you're listening to this message, the power of the Holy Spirit, if you don't know Him, the power of the Holy Spirit is available to you to have an intimate, personal, and real experience with Christ. Christ, hallelujah, is enough. The power of the Holy Ghost is available right now to heal every sickness, every disease. There is nothing that is beyond him. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. It says that he bore our griefs and our sorrows, and in the New Testament it says he bore our sicknesses and our infirmities. Hallelujah. Every sickness, every infirmity, you name it, he had it. Cancer was on the body of Christ, in the body of Christ. Um, HIV, TB, COVID-19, every virus that could ever be named and known, not only then, but even for all time, was placed in the body of Jesus Christ. Every ailment, every physical disability he experienced on the cross. We thank God for those beautiful pictures of Christ um, looking like a Hugo Boss model on a cross with a little handkerchief around his waist. But the Bible teaches us that it was a gruesome image. It says that his visage was so marred more than any man. And his form was not even like a son of man. He didn't even look like a man on that cross. And the reason why was not because of any beating. It wasn't because of any scourging. No, no scourging or amount of beating can do that to a man. He took upon himself every sickness and every infirmity. All our griefs and our sorrows. Those who are suffering from depression. Who think that there's no way out. Jesus bore every grief. Every, every sorrow. He took our shame on that cross. Hallelujah. Christ is not only enough. He is more. So much more. So much more than enough. Hallelujah. Christ is enough. God must always be enough in our lives. Moses, any great man of God, looked to him. Hallelujah. They looked to God more than what was in front of them. God had promised Abram a promised land. He had, he had promised him Land, he promised him all these things. But the Bible says in Hebrews land, Hebrews 11, that they continued knowing that in this world, they have no continuing city. They look for a, a builder. Hallelujah. They look for a, a city whose builder and whose maker was God. 
Moses going into the promised land. Christ was more than enough for him in those moments in the wilderness. How do I know this? Because when he was on the mount with God and God had given him the commandments to give to the Israelites, he said to him, I will send an angel with you because the people were being disobedient at the bottom of the mountain. You know what Moses' response was? Moses went down, he sought out the camp and he built a, a tent of meeting where anybody could go and meet with God. It was for everybody. But it seemed like only Moses and Joshua took advantage of the presence of the Lord. And in that tent that Moses had built outside the camp, he went into the tent. And this was God's response to what Moses did. He said, I will go with you. And you know what Moses' response was to that? Moses said, carry us not up hands, lest thy presence go with us. The presence of God was more important to Moses than anything. Christ was more important to him than anything. So I'm asking you, and I'm asking myself the question, because I guarantee you I'll be challenged on the same word that I'm giving you. Is Christ enough? And I want to say to us all today, he's not only enough, he's more than enough. God bless you. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this message, this word that you have given me. I pray that I've done the message justice, justice, Lord. I pray that every person that has hearkened to my voice, that has heard me speak this word today, that they would experience the life-transforming change that only your presence can bring into anybody's life. I pray that by your spirit, my Father, you would make yourself felt and known to every single person that has heard this word today. May they search the scriptures. May they see that not only are you enough, but you are always more than enough. Whenever you did something for your people, it wasn't just enough for their supply. It was over abundantly more than what they asked or even needed, my God. I pray, Father, that we would not be as those Israelites were in the wilderness that limited you, my God, but that we would see you in all your glory, in all your majesty, and all your splendor, in every circumstance that we face. That we would see, oh God, that not only are you enough, but oh God, you are more, so much more enough. We love you, my Father. Reveal yourself in power to your people, I pray. In Jesus' name. If you've listened to this message and you don't know Christ, I want to encourage you to get hold of us. You can even get hold of us by, um, on our Facebook page, we have an email address, uh, info at swchurch.co.za. Uh, get hold of us, somehow. Send us a message. Tell us how this message has made an impact in your life. And we will get hold of you. As a church, we're a family, and we want the very best for you. We want you to walk in the victory and the triumph that Christ has for you. God bless you. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the blessed sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest and abide upon each one of us today, until the Master comes.